Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Eric Berg. In many of my previous discussions, I've dived deep into the remarkable benefits of intermittent fasting. Today, we're shifting gears to discuss the flip side, the side effects of intermittent fasting. First off, for our newcomers, the advantages of this practice are substantial. You're likely to notice weight loss, particularly around the midsection, alongside enhancements in cognitive functions like memory and focus. This isn't just about shedding pounds. It's about inflammation reduction, which plays a pivotal role in conditions like arthritis and autoimmune diseases. Expect improvements in skin health, sleep quality, and a notable decrease in hunger and cravings. But now, let's peel back the curtain and explore some of the side effects with total transparency. There are some side effects that you need to know about. First one is you're gonna have a spike of uric acid. Now, uric acid is related to two conditions, gout and a certain type of kidney stone. If you're predisposed to getting kidney stones, there's two types. There's oxalate stones, and then there are uric acid stones. If you're doing intermittent fasting and you get a kidney stone, it's going to be probably a uric acid stone. Okay, another indication of high levels of uric acid is you get gout, like your big toe starts hurting, or you have some type of arthritis or pain that turns on when you do intermittent fasting. Now, again, this is not common, but it can happen. The question is, why is uric acid going up in the first place? That is because one big function of uric acid in the body is this. It's an antioxidant. Yeah, so as your body is repairing and clearing out stuff and detoxifying, it uses uric acid as an antioxidant. Interesting. Now, the simple way to reduce uric acid is just to realize that your pH is too acid and you need to alkalize a little bit. Now, the next time you eat, make sure you have big salads, okay? You can also do a potassium citrate or electrolyte powder with a lot of potassium in there because that will alkalize you very, very quick, okay? But potassium citrate is alkaline and that's a really good mineral to use. But of course, vegetables in general are very important because when you're actually eating, you're doing keto, with intermittent fasting, it's very important to consume large quantities of vegetables to minimize this right here. Because now, potentially, if you're not doing enough vegetables, you can have higher levels of uric acid and that can kind of irritate your kidneys. All right, number two, you might feel cold in your hands and your feet. This is mainly because the adaptation phase you're actually going into a hardcore ketosis. Your thyroid does not have to work as much, so it's going to turn off a little bit. It's not going to be a hypothyroid condition. It just means that your thyroid is adapting a little bit. This is temporary. It's not a big deal, but it's it may happen. Headaches may occur simply because you're coming off of running your body on sugar, especially the brain and the brain does not have the ability to store sugar, so it doesn't have glycogen. So it's dependent on what's going on with the blood. So if you're starting out and you haven't adapted to fat fully and your blood sugars are low, your brain is going to feel it and you may have a headache from low blood sugars, okay? Realize this is temporary and once three days is up into ketosis, your brain will be very happy on ketones because one of the benefits of intermittent fasting is cognitive benefits, memory, focus. You can get into ketosis through fasting and a low carb ketogenic plan. We recommend the combination, we being me. Okay, so we have moodiness, especially in the first three days. So when you start intermittent fasting, I always recommend to do it gradually. Start with three meals a day, then down to two meals a day, and let your body tell you how long to go. If you have a hard time going from one meal to the next, then we know you have insulin resistance, okay? And then when you do fasting, you're gonna get moody. You're gonna have symptoms of low blood sugar. 
the way you know you're in real good ketosis and it's all working is that you can go long periods of time without being hungry and you feel fine. So in the transition phase, mainly three days, you may feel moody and other symptoms. So it's gonna go away. You just need to persist and push through it. It's really important though, what you eat when you eat. That's why I recommend not doing junk food. Make sure you do healthy ketosis. By that way, you will make this transition a lot faster and probably without too many symptoms. Then we have number five. You may notice you might have more stomach acid okay, like a little heartburn, something like that, because fasting increases acids in your stomach. But the interesting thing is that most people will do fine on this. Most people don't have enough stomach acid, so when they do an amount of fasting and their stomach has a chance to heal and prod us enough acid, the next time they eat, it's much, much better. If this happens, which is going to be rare, but if it happens, just go ahead and eat, okay? And then gradually kind of work into it. It might mean that you're just going too fast. A lot of these symptoms that I'm talking about or side effects are just adaptation problems that happen in the beginning. But if you just push through and get through it, you're gonna have all these benefits right here. Number six, you may feel nauseated when you eat. And this is interesting because here you are, you finally get into fasting and you're going and you're feeling wonderful, euphoric, and then you eat and you feel like crap. That happens a lot. You might feel nauseous. That just has to do with the adaptation. Your body's not used to going that long and then eating and then not eating and then eating. What's gonna happen over a period of time, probably three or four weeks, this is gonna go away. Okay, because your body's going to adapt and it's going to be able to eat and then not eat and be able to digest. This usually is related to a sluggish gallbladder. Okay, so when you eat, take apple cider vinegar, maybe some purified bile salt after you eat. I have a lot of videos on that, but the apple cider vinegar will help you with this nauseousness. Okay, hair loss. Hair loss may occur if you're already deficient in the first place. So if you have nutritional deficiencies simply because in the past you didn't eat that good or you're not doing the healthy version of keto and you're consuming low quality foods like I don't recommend, you can end up with all sorts of deficiencies. And that can relate to hair loss, fatigue, being grouchy, and a whole series of other symptoms. But if your hair starts falling out, then we know you just need more nutrients. Usually it's the B vitamins. Okay, now fainting. This really only happens if you do prolonged fasting. Too quick. Let's say your body is not adapted enough and you saw one of my videos about prolonged fasting and like, because it increases stem cell and you know, arthritis and stuff. So you're gonna jump right in and go, three days, no eating? And then you end up fainting simply because you didn't have enough sea salt, okay? Or electrolytes or B vitamins. So there's a way to do this and I recommend ease into this and not jump into it too fast. So you wanna do prolonged fasting after you build up your nutrition. You have to be pretty healthy to do it, especially because a lot of people have nutritional deficiencies and if they do prolonged fasting, those deficiencies will be magnified. The other little point about this is if you're doing prolonged fasting and you eat a big meal, that's not good. The longer you fast, then when you break the fast, you want to eat just a little bit of food. The reason for that is because you have this shift in electrolytes. And if you have too many electrolytes, which are little minerals, shift outside the blood inside the cell too quick. You could actually pass out. And there's other symptoms too. So it's called refeeding. And I put a video down there to get more data. But if you're doing prolonged fasting, you need to know how to do it. You eat a little bit, you wait, you eat a little bit more. 
You wait, you eat a little bit more, and you wait, that's how you do it. Okay guys, there you have it. The full spectrum of intermittent fasting, from the profound benefits to the potential side effects. But here's the kicker. If you approach it with knowledge and caution, those side effects won't stand a chance. You're essentially arming yourself with the best of both worlds. Stick around for more insights in our upcoming videos. See you next time.